Hello everyone, welcome. What we are going to talk about in the top 100 series of Prep and Stuff today would be checking if a number is even or not. Now this program is fairly simple but we want to help people who are from CSI, non-CSIT backgrounds and even CSIT backgrounds who are not good at coding. So first and foremost, even before writing the course, the most important thing for us to understand is how do we decide, decide that if a number is even or not in general mathematical terms, right? So what we do is, so for example 21. We decide that 21 is, or for example, let's say 30. 30 is even, the reason being that when we divide this 30, when we divide this 30 by 2, we get remainder as 0. That is, it is perfectly divisible by 2, which is why it is even number, right? Similarly, again, in the case of 21, when we divide it by 2, we get a remainder of 1, that is, it is not perfectly divisible, so which is why this is odd. Now, obviously, there are two conditions, either the remainder left would be either 0 or it would be 1 when we are dividing by 2, so these are two scenarios. Now, obviously, what we are doing here is we are dividing 21 by 2 and then let's say uh, it says, uh, uh, for example, 10 and uh, here it is 20, so 1 is a remainder. Right, so this is what we are doing. But how do we write the same thing in the case of coding? So we write the same thing as, so let's say if we create a variable, for example, int num, and we give it a value, so for example, 30. So we'll write the same thing in coding as, that is if num, and we use an operator called as percentage, that is remainder operator, and we write num percentage two if that is equal to equal to 0, then in that case, that is if this particular statement returns true, then we all just would go ahead and print even. Right? So what exactly happens here? Here the value of num is 30. So 30 percentage 2 obviously would be 0 because it leaves no remainder. Now that zero value is equal to equal to zero. So which is why we go ahead and print even. Now let's have a look upon the program of the same thing. So this is basically uh, the case wherein if this condition is true, we say even. If this condition is false, we simply say odd. So let's go ahead and let's have a look upon the program of the same thing. So what's practically happening in this particular part of the code is that is we create a variable. So here there is variable initialization. Then using a printf statement, we just give the user a prompt, right? That okay, enter your num, insert a number so that the user knows that okay, I have to enter a number now. Now, obviously, let's say if the user has entered 21. So in that case, we'll be using a scanf statement since it's an integer type here, so which is why we are using percentage d. Right now, this particular value would be stored in this variable, that is 21 would be stored in this variable, and simply we write an if else statement. That is number percentage 2, if that is equal to equal to 0, we just go ahead and print even else. Obviously, if let's say in the case of 20 percentage 2 equal to equal to 0, this would be 0. So basically both of them are same. So true. So in that case, even would be printed. But let's say in the case of 21, 21 percentage 2 equal to equal to 0, this particular statement would, which is basically a remainder operator would give us 1, is 1 equal to equal to 0? No, it's not. So basically, we'll go to the else part and simply odd would be printed here. Now, this is one of the first methods on how you do it. So basically, what I've done here is I've entered the value 21. Here, insert a number and then it simply says odd. But there are multiple methods also to do the same thing. So, for example, this page would be in the description of the video. That is part of the prep and start top 100. You can just simply Google prep and start top 100. You'll get the solutions of all of these here. So, when you go to the C page, obviously, we've mentioned the whole program here. But there are multiple other ways on how you can solve it as well, which I'll not be discussing in this particular video. Now, here you can use something called as a ternary operator. Now, you can basically, what ternary operator does is it reduces down whole of these four lines into just one single line. That is what ternary operator does. I would request you to go to this page to understand what, how ternary operator is used. There is one more method which is called as bitwise operators. 
which would be a little difficult for you right now but if you understand it then i recommend you to also have a look upon this particular code but for this particular point in time it will be a little difficult for you so again you can go to this particular page of repenstein there are three ways there is no fourth way to even calculate this so that's pretty much about it i'll see you up ahead in the next video so we just launched repenstein prime subscription which is like 150 plus courses under one subscription so it has courses like c c++ java python artificial intelligence machine learning cyber security data structures comparative coding even company specific courses like tcs nqt infosys tcs digital amazon etc the link is in the description of the video go check that out i'm sure that you'll love that